二零一八年第五條題目呢，就係講核型 carrier 題嘅。咁今次呢個核型呢，係嚟自於一個正常嘅男仔啦，亦都顯示咗啦一啲已經配對咗嘅同源染色體啦。咁所以呢，喺呢個核型呢，係唔會見到一啲染色體上面嘅變異嘅，多咗條啊，少咗條啊咁樣樣嘅。Part A 咧就好直接啦，以我哋呢，喺返呢個核型入面呢，去圈返個性染色體，即係話啦，我哋要揾得出性染色體有咩咁特別啦。咁我哋呢，就要分辨得到常染色體。或者叫體染色體啦，同埋呢個性染色體嘅分別嘅。咁由於今次係一個男仔啊嘛，咁所以我哋期望嘅咧，應該揾到一個 X Y 嘅性染色體嘅。咁所以啦，根據翻個概念咧 ，X Y 染色體應該係好明顯地一條長一條短嘅。咁所以答案呢，就係呢一對嘅同源染色體啦。咁 Part B 呢，就問我哋啦，咁究竟呢個核型係嚟自於體細胞，即係平時嘅肌肉細胞啊、骨頭細胞啊，又或者啦係一個配子。咁今次係一個男仔嘛，咁應該係嚟自精子啦，係咪？有啦，就要我哋解釋下答案喎。Part B 呢，其實就係問緊我哋識唔識得將體細胞同埋配子分辨得開啦。體細胞呢，係二配體，即係話啦，佢有晒兩組嘅。染色體嘅阿爸俾一組你，阿媽俾一組你，你係二配體。配置呢，佢哋係單配體，即係話佢哋將二十三對嘅染色體呢，一對就其中抽一條俾你嘅啫，所以到頭來呢，就只係得廿三條啦。咁即係話啦，今次呢幅圖呢，你見得晒四十六條嘅染色體㗎嘛？又或者啦，有廿三對嘅染色體，或者有兩組嘅染色體。咁總之啦，呢、這個核型呢，就顯示得到呢，佢係一個二配體，所以呢，佢係一個體細胞啦。咧就問性別嘅決定嘅，今日題目就講啦，好多人咧就諗啦，後代嘅性別係主要取決於母親，然後啦就要我哋解釋下點解呢個想法係錯嘅。咁呢條題目咧就考我哋啦，性別決定嘅機制。咁當初啲科學家就研究啦，咁我哋發現啦 ，X X Y 咧喺個表現型嚟計咧都係男人嚟嘅。喂，你明明有兩個 X 噶。你應該女人嚟嘅喎，哎呀唔係啊，你個 Y 呢就係男人嚟嘅啦。如果佢嘅基因型就只係得一個嘅 X 染色體，原來呢表現出嚟呢都係一個女性喎。咁即係簡單啲嚟講呢，係有 Y 就係男人啦。咁但係點解有 Y 就係男人呢？咁啊，因為啦 ，Y 染色體上面呢，有一啲係決定你成為男性嘅基因，咁啊令到個胚胎呢，慢慢開始發展出男性嘅生殖器官啦。咁所以記緊一句説話啦，有 Y 便是男啊！無論你 X Y 定係 X X Y， 甚至 X Y Y。而呢條題目呢，係我哋解釋點解呢個説話係錯啊嘛。道德嘅性別不是取決於母親。所以題目呢，亦都考緊我哋啦，男性女性呢，當我哋製造配子嘅時候啦，有咩咁特別呢？咁啊頭先 Part B 呢，我哋都知道啦，配子呢係單配體，即係話啦，佢喺廿三對嘅同源染色體當中呢，就只會抽廿三條出嚟嘅啫，只係抽其中一個嘅 member， 所以我哋就會知道啦，男性呢，係會製造到兩類型嘅精子。一半嘅精子就係有 X 嘅染色體，而另一半嘅精子呢就係有 Y 嘅染色體。但阿媽呢就唔同啦，因為水性呢係兩個 X 嘅染色體，佢能夠製造嘅卵子呢都只係會有 X 嘅染色體。咁當精卵結合受精作用嘅時候呢，原來後代嘅性別係取決於究竟我哋係用邊一款嘅精子去同呢個擁有 X 染色體嘅卵子去做個結合啦。如果啦係一個精子。入面係有 X c h r o m o s o m e 嘅話呢，咁出到嚟嘅後代就係一個女仔。如果呢個精子係有 Y 嘅染色體，而同呢個卵子結合嘅話呢，生出嚟嘅就係一個男仔啦。整個受精過程，邊一粒嘅精子同個卵子結合呢，係一個隨機嘅過程嚟嘅。好，咁嚟到啦，終極解讀啊！咁究竟呢句说话你话错啊嘛？后代性别不是取决于母亲，系咪就等于话后代性别系主要取决于父亲？都不是，两者皆不是。系因为啦，虽然我哋睇得出咧，精子好似有一个重要嘅角色，但系受精作用整个过程系一个随机过程。后代嘅性别既不是取决于母亲。亦不是取決於父親，這是一個隨機的過程哦。咁呢個題目啦，有啲咩嘅變奏呢？就係、是、直接問你啦，究竟一對夫婦佢要生一個男仔嘅機率係幾多呢？跟住啦，解釋你嘅答案。今次呢係唔能夠畫呢個基因遺傳圖嘅，咁即係你要純文字去做法啦。你回憶下四步成詩啦，點樣可以幫到你啦？如果你要答個機率二分一，一定係好簡單嘅。咁但係點樣用文字去解釋呢？咁你 download 返呢一份練習筆記啦，咁啊又教返你哋㗎啦。好，又嚟到一點出發啦。今次嘅題目呢，就由核型做起點，就問兩樣嘢啦。
唔同類型嘅細胞啦，同埋唔同類型嘅染色體啦。細胞啦，有體細胞同埋配置啦，分別啦就係二配體同埋單配體啦。咁過往都拍咗一段片咧，去教大家去理解到有絲分裂、減素分裂如何咧係參與喺製造精子嘅過程當中嘅，亦都教大家點樣計數嘅。然後啦，去到染色體呢，咁我哋有常染色體同埋性染色體啦。我哋將呢兩套嘅概念結合呢，就係講緊受精作用生出嚟嘅小朋友嘅性別，究竟係取決於阿爸定係取決於阿媽呢？就就係問呢一樣嘢啫嘛。咁當中啦，仲有另一樣嘢呢，想提大家嘅就係受精作用嘅重要性，因為配置呢係單配體。当两个配子结合嘅话咧，佢就会变翻做二配体啦。咁所以咧，受精作用嘅重要性就系令到染色体数目回复翻二配体。而另一个引申咧，就喺性染色体啦，亦都系问翻你性连锁啦。咁过往咧，我哋都有啲色盲嘅题目啦，咁亦都拍咗一段 shorts 啦，去教大家咧常染色体同埋性染色体有咩分别嘅。Two one eight question five is about the carrier type, so you can see this carrier type it shows the paired homologous chromosome. Of a normal boy, it means that this boy is not suffering any chromosomal mutation, or one more chromosome, less one chromosome, or a longer chromosome, or what, or any abnormal chromosome. So for part A, very straightforward. Circle the sex chromosome on this photo micrograph. So we need to identify the sex chromosome in the carrier type, and we need to distinguish the autosome from the sex chromosome. Because he is normal boy, so we need to look for the XY chromosome. So for the XY chromosome, it should be one of the chromosome is much longer than the other. So that's why this pair it should be the XY chromosome, which is the sex chromosome. And for part B, we need to state the type of the cell, somatic cells or gametes, from which the karyotype was obtained, and explain your answer. This question is checking us to distinguish somatic cells from gametes. So for the somatic cells, they are diploid cells, and for gamete cells, they are haploid cells. What does it mean? It means that the diploid cells, the somatic cells, it contains two sets of chromosomes: one set from father and one set from mother. So therefore, in the human being, we have 23 chromosomes from father and 23 chromosomes from mother, and there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So for this karyotype, it should be obtained from the somatic cells. Because there are two sets of chromosome, or you can count the number forty-six chromosome or twenty-three pairs of chromosome. And then for part C, it's commonly thought that the sex of the offspring is mainly determined by the mother. Explain why this thought is not true. In this question, we need to recall the mechanism of sex determination. From the scientific investigation, we know that the human of the genotype XXY are phenotypically male. You may think that no, Mr. Leung, there are two X chromosomes, but there is a one Y chromosome, and then he becomes a male. While genotypes with just one X chromosome are phenotypically female, so that means it's not necessary to have two X chromosome to make you to become a female. Only the exam say, and it suggested that it is the presence of Y chromosome which make a human male. And the concept is that because the exam say the exam say, and the concept is that it is caused by the male determining gene on the Y chromosome to make the male embryo to develop the male reproductive system, the testes, the penis, these organs. We need to explain that why the sex of the offspring is not mainly determined by the mother. That so we need to recall the gamete formation of female and male. Gametes they are haploid cells. That means they contain either one member of the homologous chromosome. Therefore, during the meiotic cell division, male produce two types of sperm. Half of them contain X chromosome, while half of them contain Y chromosome. And for the female, for the egg, all the egg produced by the female contain an X chromosome because in the female they have two X chromosome. And during the fertilization, the sex of a baby is determined by the type of sperm. That fills with the X-bearing ovum. For example, the sperm with the X chromosome fills with the egg, so the cycle will develop into a girl. And what if the ovum fills with the sperm with the Y chromosome, so the cycle will develop into a boy? And the whole process is a random process. For this question, the ultimate concept checking is that sex of the offspring. In this question, we know that is not. 
mainly determined by the mother. So can we say that the sex of the offspring is mainly determined by the father? No, no, no. We cannot say it. Cause for the fertilization process, which is a random process. Any possible question variation, it can ask you that what is the theoretical chance of a parent giving birth to a boy? And then you need to explain your answer. And genetic diagram are not accepted. So you need to use the four steps logic to construct your answer. So you can download the worksheet to have a look, and then it will also teach you how to answer this question. For the chance, 50%. Everyone can answer it, but how can you explain the other five months? So you can learn it from the worksheet. But let's talk about the curriculum mapping. It starts from the karyotype and asks you about the cells and the chromosome. And for the cells, there are somatic cells and the gamete. Somatic cells, they are diploid and gamete, they are haploid. So you can watch this video to know that mitotic cell division, meiotic cell division, how can they be involved in the production of sperm and know some calculation in biology. And for the chromosome, autos and sex chromosome and then we combine these two concepts and then we can talk about the fertilization and the sex determination and for this part I would like to talk about the importance of fertilization fertilization it means the sperm and the egg they fuse together and it is a way to restore the diploid number of chromosome in the offspring. And for the sex chromosome, we can talk about the sex linkage. In the past, there are various videos about the sex link disease. There was a shot about the difference between the autosome and the sex chromosome.